This is KGMB 9 News at 10. Happy Little Friday. I'm Jim Mendoza. Kim has the evening off. Our top story tonight, details from a deadly crash that happened more than two years ago. Six people were killed, and now the National Transportation Safety Board has released a report. The highlights give us a glimpse inside the cockpit just before the plane went down. And KGMB 9's Brooks Bear has our story. Jim, the NTSB has completed the fact-finding portion of its investigation. It has not yet made conclusions about why the private jet crashed, but it does give us clues. Home video captured these images of the crash site shortly after the Sabreliner slammed into a remote mountainside. The six killed were Macy Price Sr., his son, Macy Price Jr., co-pilot Jason Miller, Laurel Marr, the pilot William Marr, and passenger Delilah Dieterding. The impact and ensuing fire scattered wreckage over rough terrain 3.3 miles short of the Molokai Airport. The flight originated on Christmas Island on May 10, 2000. The plane stopped for a customs check on Maui. Then, a little after 8 at night, it took off for the short flight to Molokai. The NTSB report indicates the crew had trouble locating the Molokai Airport. Less than four minutes before crashing, the cockpit voice recorder captured Captain Marr saying, this wasn't supposed to be difficult. Seconds before impact, Marr was heard saying, oop. Co-pilot Jason Miller responded, that's the clouds. Marr fired back, let's have that again. That's the clouds, huh? Oh. Three seconds later, Marr blurts out, oh, what do you... Those were his last words, one second before impact. The six were headed here to Macy Price Sr.'s oceanfront home on Molokai. His Colorado-based aircraft company owned the plane. The transcript of what the crew said before impact suggests what many already suspect, that the captain and co-pilot were lost or disoriented. Nothing in the NTSB report indicates mechanical failure. The NTSB will issue one more report on the crash. That report may explain everything. Jim, back to you. Thank you very much, Brooks. The fire department needs your help finding a missing surfer. Around 5 this evening, someone reported seeing a kite surfer in trouble near Waialua. Search crews found a fluorescent green kite at Mokulei'ia Beach, but no surfer. The kite has yellow stripes and black lettering. If you know the person who was out surfing there, please call the fire department. Well, the 4th of July kept firefighters busy. Since midnight, HFD answered at least 20 brush fire calls. Counting yesterday and today, there have been nearly 50 calls. The department says 29 of the brush fires last night were ignited by fireworks compared to 21 last year. Firefighters put out 17 rubbish fires, one more than in 2001. The department says 10 erupted before 9 o'clock. That is when people could legally start lighting their fireworks. Investigators say there was nothing accidental about fires at the Waikiki Yacht Club. The crews put out three boat fires, one after the other. Captain Richard Sue says it appears to be arson. It does appear this fire is suspicious, intentionally set, and caused several thousand dollars damages to these three yachts at the Waikiki Yacht Club. Investigators say it looks like someone tossed flares inside the three boats. No one was on the burnt yachts, but people are living on boats nearby. Fire destroyed the former home of a charter school on the Big Island. Fire officials say crews found the Waters of Life school engulfed in flames when they arrived just before 10 last night. The third floor of the wooden building collapsed and damage is estimated at $300,000. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Another accused liquor commissioner has decided to work with prosecutors. 43-year-old Samuel Kun Yen Ho pleaded guilty to conspiracy and extortion charges. Ho initially pleaded not guilty, but agreed to testify against co-defendants. In exchange, prosecutors will drop other charges against him. Ho faces up to 20 years in prison for each count and a $250,000 fine. He will be sentenced in January. A teenager accused of killing a man about a year ago pleaded down to manslaughter and second-degree assault. Pedro Velarde was initially charged with murder. Police say Velarde and Alvin Samao uh, I should say Alvin, yeah, Alvin Sumau admitted they struck Benjamin Almarino in the head and threw his body into Nu'uwanu stream last year. If convicted, Velarde could get up to 20 years in prison for manslaughter and five years for assault. Well, the Hotel Workers Union is using a different tactic as it tries to reach a contract agreement. The moves are out of the ordinary and designed to keep workers on the job while impacting their employers. KGMB 9's Garrett Kamimoto explains in tonight's Eye on Hawaii special report.
Picket lines are one of the most traditional labor tactics, but lines set up in front of Sheraton hotels this week came with a twist. No one walked off the job to participate. Those on the lines were off duty. You know, we're a different union now. We're going to act different. We're going to we're going to negotiate differently, and uh, you know we're going to fight differently. Union leaders say they're far from a strike, and at this point they will be non-traditional. Well, they can expect us to do the unexpected. I think uh, we certainly are going to uh, be innovating and trying new new things. It's certainly creative. A labor lawyer agrees. The union's tactics are unusual. The downside uh, is not as great as a strike because you don't have a bunch of people out uh, that aren't earning a living. They're all working. They're all getting paid. And he says the effect on the hotel may not be as bad as if workers walked off the job, but it could still hurt economically. It's got to have some impact, and there's some uh, pro-union or union supporters that probably aren't going to uh, cross that picket line. But the union isn't stopping with informational pickets. Sources say housekeepers at some Sheraton hotels cleaned one fewer room a day as part of a work slowdown designed to turn up the pressure on managers. A slowdown uh, is going to be difficult to uh, measure, uh, I think, for the employer and, and difficult to determine if, you know, who's actually responsible if, if uh, you know, it depends on what kind of slowdown that they're going to have. But, you know, people can be disciplined potentially for work slowdowns. And Local 5 is getting involved in the political arena trying to convince the city not to approve a new Hilton timeshare tower and to kill tax credits for hotel construction projects, all in hopes that the political and economic pressure will convince employers to see things their way. Garrett Kamimoto, KGMB9 News. The Hotel Workers Union has canceled contracts with two employers, Sheraton and Hilton. Now, workers at the Ala Moana Hotel are also working without a contract. The union is also negotiating with the Hyatt Waikiki. Governor Cayetano signed off on several bills today. The laws reached all the way from the freeway to the grocery aisle. One bill boosts penalties for anyone caught speeding more than 30 miles over the speed limit. Racers could lose their cars and spend time in jail. Another new law makes it a crime to hurt or interfere with seeing eye dogs and service animals. And anyone who names their coffee after an island needs to be able to prove all the beans used were grown there. Coffee companies can still mix local and foreign beans, but the label must say that it is a blend. A familiar face is throwing his hat into the political ring. Bob Fishman, former city managing director and head of the Hawaii Tourism Authority, is running for city council. Fishman filed papers for Council District 4, which represents Hawaii Kai to Waikiki. Uh, the city council is really close to the people. It's the most trusted level of government that we have at a policymaking level. And that's why it's a natural place for me to come. And I'm looking forward to a real opportunity if I'm honored to be elected. Fishman will probably face Representative Charles DeJoux and neighborhood board member Charlie Rogers in the upcoming election. Congresswoman Patsy Mink has filed for her 13th term in office. She is defending the 2nd Congressional District, stretching from rural Oahu and the neighbor islands. Mink says Congress changed dramatically since September 11th. And no other Democrats have filed to run for that seat as of yet. Well, the state says construction on the potential H-1 widening project will not cause traffic delays. The state wants the contractor to work 22 hours a day, seven days a week, and pay the state each time it shuts down a lane of traffic. The plan, still in the, the design phase, is to widen the freeway to six lanes westbound from the Waimalu Viaduct to the Pearl City off-ramp. If you are going downtown tomorrow, you can expect a detour or two. An army of construction workers and grips are getting ready to shoot the movie Tears of the Sun. The movie set in Nigeria, but Ali'i Olani Hale, Hawaii's Supreme Court building, will stand in for the presidential palace, at least on the outside. The inside scenes will actually be shot in the main post office. The streets are full of filmmaking equipment and will close when they fire up the smoke machines for the movie's battle scenes. So if you're planning your route, keep in mind that King Street will be closed from Richard Street to Punchbowl Street Saturday. Mililani Street is closed until Monday at midnight. And Queen Street is closed in the Evabound direction also until Monday at midnight. Los Angeles International Airport is back to normal somewhat, one day after a deadly shooting. Today, investigators searched through a man's memories, looking for the reason why. Plus, a big boom brings the Dow storming back, and that's some good news for your stock portfolio. We'll tell you about it next on KGMB 9 News.
This portion of KGMB9 News is sponsored by the bank that high-flying companies like Genesis Aviation count on for down-to-earth financial advice. Citibank, it's worth it to switch. We've been working with Citibank for nearly 25 years. They meet our financing needs with a sense of urgency and purpose. You can't be a good bank for customers if you don't understand their business. Citibank knows our industry and our needs intimately. That's absolutely vital. Food service is a really tough industry, but Tanaka Tokyo Restaurant has made a success of it year after year. It's hard to imagine a better relationship. Citibank, it's worth it to switch. It's great to work with real pros. Enter 7-Eleven's Carnival of Cars for a chance to win your choice from five 2002 cars. Courtesy of Jackson Auto Group and KGMB9. Gatorade Edge and Propel Fitness Water are on special at two for three dollars. Buy any two bottles and get a free Gatorade Energy Bar. Gatorade, is it in you? Get a regular size Big Bite Hot Dog, Frito-Lay Big Grab Chips, and 16 ounce Golf all for just $1.99. A 75th anniversary special. Great everyday values, specials, and a chance to win the car of your choice from 7-Eleven. There's only one place, one place to find the most homes both still on the market. And only one place to find the most complete Sunday open house guide. The Island Home Section. In the Sunday Honolulu Star Village. You'll read great articles and stories about real estate right here in Hawaii. It's where you'll find more information about Kalamaku'u and Hawaii Kai built by Schuler Homes. Priced in the mid 400s. Be simple. These three and four bedroom homes come with central air, landscaping, and much more. The Island Home Section. In the Sunday Honolulu Star Village. It's your complete guide to find your way home. Safer working conditions, the eight-hour day, health insurance, paid vacations, a retirement pension, paid holidays, paid sick leave, family leave, overtime pay, a living wage. The men and women of labor unions won these benefits at the bargaining table and set the standard for all working people in Hawaii. That's why labor unions are good for Hawaii. The Labor Alliance, people who make Hawaii work. This summer, Big Brother is back. A whole new season, a whole new game. In the summer, on Big Brother. A new season of Big Brother premieres CBS Wednesday, July 10th. The first LL flight to leave the United States touched down in Israel today. Passengers on flight 106 were stuck in Los Angeles after the shooting that killed two at the LL ticket counter yesterday. And these passengers were okay, but their luggage shows some signs of the deadly scene. The biggest question in the deadly shooting in, L in L.A. is why. Why did a man walk into the terminal with an intention to kill? The FBI looked for answers from the suspect's relatives and his apartment. Reporter Bill Whitaker has the latest from Los Angeles. The FBI identified this man, Egyptian immigrant Hashem Mohammed Hadayat, as the gunman who went on the murderous Independence Day rampage at Los Angeles International Airport. The 41-year-old limousine driver was armed with a hunting knife and two handguns, one a semi-automatic pistol, when he shot to death a man and a woman at the El Al ticket counter, and a security guard shot and killed him. Besides terrorism and such, we're also looking at the possibility of a hate crime. Uh, we're also looking in the possibility of uh, the person being despondent for some reason. Overnight, agents scoured Hadayat's suburban Los Angeles apartment, retrieving a computer, searching for a motive. Some neighbors described a quiet family man, others an angry man, especially after 9-11. His upstairs neighbor unfurled flags above Hadayat's door. He had a lot of anger. He had a lot of anger in America. He said there are a lot of there are crazy people in America. He had a lot of anger. In Egypt, where his wife and two sons are spending the summer, Hadayat's oh, uncle oh, says oh, the oh, news oh, from America oh, is hard to oh, believe. I don't feel that he do that. But the FBI says he did, that he stood quietly in line and with no provocation opened fire. He was wrestled to the ground by a man in line and an El Al security guard, all the while slashing with his knife, then was shot dead by a second security guard. Waiting passenger Paul Parkas shot this picture. Thank God El Al security took him down or it would have been... Who knows, because, I mean, everybody, everybody was just laying out on the ground. He could have just sat there and shot away at people. But he had enough time to kill two. El Al employee Vicky Hen and Yaakov Aminov, an Israeli immigrant, at the airport to drop off a friend. And he's very sad. <laughs> we lost my brother law He's a very good person. He never hurt nobody. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> 
This international terminal is back to normal now, but this has raised new debate about even more airport security. Los Angeles now is considering a plan to check all bags and all passengers even before they enter airport grounds. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Los Angeles. In other news abroad now, the U.S. could take on Iraq from all directions. The New York Times report doesn't say when, but the information gives us a look at the Bush administration's military strategy. The classified report calls for forces in the air, land, and sea to attack from the north, south, and the west. The invasion force would be an army of about 250,000 troops. Many of the soldiers would be based in Kuwait. The report also mentions bases in Turkey and Qatar as potential launching sites for air attacks. A source leaked the information reportedly because of frustration with the U.S. policy toward Iraq. The flooding is not over in Texas. Crews are getting ready for another round of rain. People already have to wade or paddle to their flooded homes. Many roads are underwater. Now, the main concern, swollen rivers and lakes that threaten to rush over the banks. Ten counties are officially disaster areas, so families can get some federal money. Communities burned by wildfires now have to worry that floods will follow fires burn hundreds of uh, thousands of trees in Colorado. Those trees used to hold back rushing rain, and now water could trigger mud and ash slides. Severe thunderstorms hitting the Glenwood area forced 200 families from their homes, and forecasters say strong storms are likely to hit burned out areas. Baseball has lost a legend. Star slugger Ted Williams died today. He was 83. The loss saddened fans all across America. I, I remember um, the All-Star game from maybe two years ago when all the players came out to uh, surround Ted Williams when he came out on the field. You could see a lot of admiration from all the other players of a very high caliber. And here was a man who was probably better than all of them. Now, fans in Milwaukee got to look at the last jersey that Williams ever wore. Williams was the last major leaguer to bat 400 in a season. During his career with the Boston Red Sox, Williams hit a total of 521 home runs. And Liz will have a look at one of baseball's greats. So look back at his career, and that's coming up later on in sports. WorldCom and Enron troubles left many of us watching dropping stocks. Today, a business boom in the Big Apple. The Dow made its biggest jump in nine months. The Dow ended up more than 300 points to close at about 93.79. And you can thank a calm 4th of July for the excitement on Wall Street. Reporter John Roberts has the very latest. It was a relatively trouble-free 4th of July that lit a fire under Wall Street. The Dow shook off a pre-Independence Day swoon and shot up 324 points. Even the anemic Nasdaq found new life, gaining almost 70 points, finishing the week above its post-9-11 low. People were actually afraid of a terrorist attack. The stock market was. And when there was none... We had a nice relief rally. The good news that there was no significant bad news even helped Wall Street shrug off a slight rise in the June unemployment rate. A tenth of a percent is not a big deal at all. And the fact is that the unemployment rate is still very low relative to history. But the biggest jump in the Dow since last September doesn't mean the slide is over. Investor confidence is still shattered in the wake of the world common Enron scandals. And most people believe there's more to come. There'll be other things down the pike. I'm, I'm almost sure of it. It's got to be cleaned up. It's in the process of being cleaned up, and it will be cleaned up, and then we'll be able to go forward. And good news here locally, too. Most local stocks did well as well. Coming up, relay races, volleyball, and one big sink or swim competition. But the winning formula for these boats is friendship. We'll tell you why next. You know, with Boystream, there's something nice about getting the most minutes and never paying for long distance or roaming. It's called no hidden charges. I mean, after all, where would we hide them? Sign up now and get unlimited weekend minutes from Boystream. Get more, pay less, guaranteed. The Kapalua Wine and Food Festival returns for its 21st year, July 5th through the 7th. Nationally acclaimed author and master sommelier Andrea Immer returns as host for this tribute to food and wine classics and brings with her premier vintages from the world's top wineries, Hawaii's hottest chefs, and the beauty of the Kapalua Resort. Don't miss the Kapalua Wine and Food Festival, July 5th through the 7th. Call 800-KAPALUA for tickets and information.
behind all 2002 Saturn L series, and behind most 2002 Saturn S series, you'll now find 0% APR financing for five years. For restrictions, see your retailer. You always pay for long distance. You never pay for long distance. You always pay for long distance. You never pay for long distance. Sign up now and get unlimited weekend minutes from VoiceStream. Get more, pay less, guaranteed. Collect Kona Cafe proofs of purchase and listen for details on how to redeem them for prizes. From Kona Cafe different sort of recipe now. The ingredients, duct tape, water bottles, and a lot of hope. All the right material for a sink or swim competition. KJB 9's Jade Moon has our story. Student leaders kicked off the event by showing the youngsters how to dress for a day of fun in the sun. Go! The kids divided up into groups for relay races, beach ball, volleyball, and even a boat regatta. The fifth and sixth grade competitors built their own boats, and depending on the materials they used, it was a sink or swim affair. The next person, get ready on shore. When it was all over, the leeward paddlers found the formula for first place. It's how we built it, and the teamwork we put into it, and I think I paddled a little bit hard, hard, really hard. And the secret behind the winning boat? Simplicity. We use duct tape and water bottles, and that's pretty much it. Jade Moon, KGMB 9 News. I guess <laughs> whatever floats your boat, huh? Well, the YMCA says the games not only give the kids a little friendly competition, but a lesson in good sportsmanship. Yeah, way to go. It was a beautiful day out there today, and Guy knows all about it, right, Guy? That's right, Jim. And this weekend, the possibilities are endless as far as what you want to do, unless, of course, you might want to be dancing in the rain. Given the conditions, that might be a tough go. Here's your temperatures all across the state. Your complete weather forecast is coming up next. Enter 7-Eleven's Carnival of Cars for a chance to win your choice from five 2002 cars, courtesy of Jackson Auto Group and KGMB9. 23.5-ounce cans of Arizona drinks and teas are on special at 99 cents. Arizona drinks and teas, here's to your health. Fuji's disposable quick-snap camera with flash is on special for only $8.99. Get the picture with Fuji Film. Great everyday values, specials, and a chance to win the car of your choice from 7-Eleven. $39.99. $39.99. I can't believe. They're just $39.99. That's right. They're in specs. And at this price, hey, you can match them to your shoes or your watch band. $39.99. Even your car. $39.99. In specs. Hundreds of styles, quality frames with custom prescription lenses. Just $39.99. $39.99. $39.99. Spectacular spectacles and so affordable. Only at in specs in Ward Warehouse. I'm glad Hawaii is my home, son. Yeah. Sir. And Aloha. We even have Aloha Care, a quest health plan that really cares. And Aloha Care wants me to care about my health. Hey, they're right. If I take care of my body, it can do amazing things. So get out there and enjoy yourself. Make it fun. Keep it healthy. Fill it with Aloha. Aloha Care. The difference really is Aloha! <laughs> What kind of person puts solar water heating in their home? People who want to save month after month on water heating and those who want a $750 rebate. People who want a 35% tax credit and a free post-installation inspection from Hawaiian Electric. So far, over 17,000 people like you have gone solar. If you'd like to get more information about saving with solar energy, call 94 Power. Hawaiian Electric, giving you the power. 
Introducing Sophia. Uh, I was born in Sweden 22 years ago. This Harvard grad is ready to unearth cool new clues for Jeopardy. I love my job. Meet the new Jeopardy Clue Crew. Yay! Weekdays at 4 and Saturdays at 5 on KGMV 9. Now, Guy Hockey with Hawaii's most complete weather report. It is the season of Obon. That's when Buddhists hold memorial services for deceased relatives. It is believed that those spirits return to visit their families. Bon dances are held annually at this time of year at Buddhist churches. Good news for them is that the weather will be great for all the visiting spirits, that, spirits and for all the folks celebrating Obon season. Now, as far as the weather goes, it's the same old song and dance, and that's a good thing. We have this upper level low. It's bringing up some clouds from the south for the Big Island and for Maui, but those clouds are just upper level clouds. We're not seeing a whole lot of moisture from that system. After all, it is sort of weak. The trade winds are pushing in some clouds and some moisture to the windward signs. We'll see a few showers tonight for the windward and Mauka areas. Now, today we saw lots of sunshine and temperatures soared, and these are the temperatures we'll most likely see tomorrow. The hot spot down in Kona at 88 degrees. We were right behind. Honolulu came in at 86. A little cool on Kahului, but that's because they had a fair bit of clouds. Only rose up to 83 on the, gar on the valley aisle. Partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies tonight because of all that uh, high cloud cover from that upper level low. But we don't expect much rain tonight. Just a few windward and Mauka sprinkles and those trade winds will be light and breezy at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Tomorrow we expect another windy day, but that's a good thing. It's going to help to keep us cool. We are expecting a lot of sunshine in the afternoon. It might be a little bit uh, da uh, damp and cloudy in the morning, but other than that, look for a very nice day. As far as the surf, there is some hope. Believe me, check this out. Two to four in town, so it's going to get a little bit bigger tomorrow. The peak for this little swell is expected on Sunday when it's going to be about head high. But for tomorrow, just about chest to shoulder high. And that's a big improvement over what we've seen over the last several days. Marginal conditions, so it's going to be a little choppy. None to one down towards the west side, but that means pretty good fishing and boating. And none to one up in the country. So just forget about it, surf out towards Makaha and up towards Chandri. Now over the next five days, we're talking some beautiful stuff. The weekend's gonna be very, very nice. A few winter and Malka showers, breezy trade winds at 10 to 25, and look at those temperatures. Yep, sunblock weather is here, and it's here to stay for quite a while, <coughs> and it looks like it's going to last at least into the middle part of next week. So take that sunblock with you wherever you go, and maybe take a picnic basket too. Nice warm days and fairly cool nights. Yeah, nice. not bad. All right. You have a great weekend. Guys. Oh, don't worry. It's you already started. Are you going to get out there and do a little surfing? I don't know. I think I'm doing a little bit of this. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dave has the night off and Liz is in with sports. She's got a tribute to Ted Williams. That is coming up. Don't miss it. 70th Midsummer Classic. This portion of KGMB9 News is brought to you by Hawaii Woodcrafts Incorporated. They can replace or reface your cabinets.